One of my favorite passages is found in 2 Corinthians. It talks about, uh, I, sometimes you heard me say we have this treasure in earth and vessels and sometimes in cracked pots. <laughs> okay. Talking about ministry is what Paul is going to be saying here. And there's a, there's a problem in, in our modern day that we have professional ministers. When everybody is a minister of the gospel, whether you know it or not, we've all been called to be proclaimers. We've all been called to, to broadcast the seed. We've all been called. And sometimes we say, well, let the preacher do it. And you know, sometimes I don't mind doing it, but you know what? I can't be there all the time. Or another pastor can't be there all the time. So it's important for each one of us as ministers, so we've received life to be part of that uh, wonderful sharing of the word. And sometimes, well, I know this fall, we are going to probably participate along with the Billy Graham crusade, where they are going to broad uh, telecast uh, Billy Graham and, and the service. And they're going to ask us to stay at home with t our TV. Imagine that. And they're going to ask you to have someone come to your house that does not know the Lord to watch with you. And you get the privilege to lead them to the Lord. Won't that be cool? I mean, they're going to be responding to the Spirit of the Lord. And that's always the way it is. But uh, everybody get, ought, you ought to have less than like 5%. I think that actually the, the statistic is 2% of Christians have ever led someone to the Lord. So uh, this will be a great time to really uh, shine. So I, I look forward to that. And uh, we have professionalized ministry. And uh, according to Ephesians chapter 4, a pastor and teacher, which is where my bent is and my calling, is to equip the saints for ministry. Guess what? You may not like this message because I'm going to put you to work. <laughs> but a lot of you have already been working. And I just want you to see, you know, uh, doing a task, I don't know if you've ever had this, but we had, a, at my house, we had asparagus. And as a kid, I didn't like asparagus. And it was down at the lower end of the field, and it was a long hike in the hot sun. Of course, I played football, and we ran after and knocked people down, but that was different. You know, and, 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 you know, I would walk some places to be with my friends. That was different, but this was work. And to go down to the backfield, just sort of took your bag. Attitude means everything, doesn't it? How's your day going? And we would go down, and I would pick that. Well, sometimes we'd get a whole grocery bag of asparagus. It was a big patch. Oh, I wish I'd had that big patch. <laughs> I never liked asparagus until I couldn't afford it. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's that way in life, how you approach some things, the attitude. How many you know that we all do things? Robin was trying to teach Michael a little few things, and she had him help with the turkey. Ew, Mom, all that junk in there. And all the ladies going like, yeah, so what? Ugh. You know, that, that way he won't cook it with all the innards in there when he cooks a turkey, hopefully. But, you know, he, it's time to learn, son. You're 22. Uh, and we all have heard those stories where people did, never were taught, and they cooked it and messed up everything. So, you know, as we're growing, it, attitude means a lot of stuff. And as in the ministry, the same thing is true. If it's going to be a, a burden, you know what? It's going to be a long day. It can be a burden or a privilege to serve the Lord, can it? Some people in their Christian walk, oh, I, we don't smoke and we don't chew. We don't go with the girls that do. Oh. And they miss all the great things of living for the Lord because they're looking at the wrong side of the coin, so to speak. They don't think of all the things that they're, they're missing out on, like all the hurt and the pain. Uh, and you know what? It's worth to give up some stuff to serve the Lord, I think, anyhow. And uh, so we serve the Lord, and living for the Lord is not a punishment. Mark that down. Living for the Lord is not a punishment. It's a privilege. 
And I, the, it's almost like prayer. Sometimes when you first start praying, you get down to your, and you say, oh, Lord, man, time is crawling on. Ah. And then after your season for you, you say, Lord, I can't wait to get to pray. Attitude means everything. And so when you think about this, the Apostle Paul is talking about attitude. Now we're going to go to 2 Peter chapter, or 2 Peter, <laughs> 2 Corinthians. I know the difference. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to read the chapter because it really has a lot of wonderful things to say about our, our ministry, your ministry and mine. Talking to all the believers, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have received this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For if we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake, for God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined into our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here's the part I like. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, so we're not exempted, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body uh, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. If we're going to take it for the Lord, He's going to give us the strength we need. For we are we which are, live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be, man, be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So when death worketh in us, but life in you. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up by Jesus and shall present us with you. So we're all going together here. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perisheth, the inward man is renewed day by day. I like that one too. You know what? So, the, so the, this old body don't move like it used to, but boy, I tell you what, it's still jumping up and down inside. For our light affliction, I use this sometimes in, in funerals, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal. Lord, I pray that as we look at your word, that you keep us from being a quitter, that you would encourage our hearts, that we would want to do things that would honor you, not in our own strength and not for our own glory, but for the glory of God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you love the Lord, he gives you an infusion of his grace in many times when you're about ready to quit. He, gives, he helps us. He gives grace to the humble, but he gives strength and wisdom to the weak and the, understand, the ones who lack understanding. I guarantee you that's true. And uh, in here, you know, he keeps us. And Paul says he kept me from being a deceiver. He kept me from being a self-promoter because I was just praising God. And, and then we have this valuable treasure in these jars of clay. To, to uh, re go back to Acts chapter 9 when Ananias, one of the things we had last night, was going to pray for Paul and the scales were going to fall off his eyes. God was telling Ananias, he said, he's a chosen vessel. He's a, he, and, and now Paul says, we are vessels. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. The interesting thing is that God works for people just like you and me. And he doesn't even play favorites. He uses whomever who will yield at the time. So I just think that sometimes we have been too conditioned to say the pastor will do it. The minister will do it when we've all been called to the ministry. In fact, the whole concept of the New Testament is that New Testament believers are the priesthood. 
You, now you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people that have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's you that God wants to use. Interesting, you know, that God would want to use each one of us in, in his own way. God hasn't called you to be like me, and aren't you thankful? Don't all amen at once. He hasn't called me to do your job either. In fact, there are people that you are uniquely qualified to touch. And God's counting on you. You say, well, maybe I haven't met him yet. Maybe you haven't. Maybe, maybe it's down the road. I mean, sometimes, like with Robin going through MS, we get to talk to people who have MS. Maybe you've beaten cancer and the Lord has helped you through that. Maybe you have gone through something difficult and God has helped you every step of the way. And someone says, well, you don't understand how it is. And you say, oh, but my God. My God helped me. He's, he's the one who sustained me. He's the one who helped me. And he could do it for you because, hey, he did it for me. I'm not that hot. They say, amen. You're, no, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Sometimes, some of the things that you and I are going through are so that God will receive the glory and that we'll get a unique position, a place of ministry. Every Christian has a gospel ministry to perform. And so there are some demands. There's sometimes the ministry is demanding. You know, it demands us to be faithful. Paul says, I'm not going to be a quicker. I'm not going to be a deceiver. I'm not going to be a self-promoter. And Paul showed them that, you know what, even when the going gets tough, you can't quit. See, when God calls us, I mean, I, this morning I preached about Peter who said, uh, I think I'll just go back to fishing, but God came back to him, didn't he? He says, Peter, hey, you left. Get back over here, Peter. I love you, Peter. I'll forgive you, Peter. And did, what did Peter say? No, I think I'll just stay in the boat. Peter jumped out of that boat and said, I'm coming. And he ran to see the Lord, didn't he? I mean, that's how much he wanted. You know, every, I have a little thing on my desk, and one of the little actions, everybody needs to be needed. That's so true. Some people give up in life because they think they have no value. I'm X, Y, Z old. I don't think I have anything to add to this world. Well, with that attitude, probably not. Why, and I, this is a question I hear from some elderly people. Why am I still here? I said, just to bug the rest of us. I, you know. And they go, I just, I just I'm, I'm breaking into the pity party because you know what? When you're a young parent and you're trying to chase the crumb crunchers around, you really, you're praying you can catch them. That's about the extent. Lord, help me. Give me strength for the moment. And then we have a seasoned saint who can intercede and grab hold of the horns of the altar and pray someone through a, a hard place. They see some things that maybe with some wisdom, sometimes a younger person doesn't see and they can pray proactively and spend some time. You say, all I have is time. I don't have a lot of money. You don't need a lot of money to pray. You just have to make time. And that's one thing we all get the same amount of. And that's why it says, teach us to number our days. We don't know how many days we're going to get, but we get the same amount of time each day, and we want to make them count. So God has purpose, but you know, sometimes the ministry can be demanding. Uh, it never, you know, he says, if the, the word here is to faint not, because some people lose heart, and they quit, and they uh, turn away, and, you know, uh, sometimes when the, the reality of what God has called you to do and what God is asking of you, sometimes it's easier to just cash in and say, oh, it's okay. The Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's true. That's true. You know what? It, being truthful is something that our world does not value, but I do and the Christians do. Telling the truth is so important in this world that lies to get their own way. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says it like this, I beseech you therefore, as a prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called. God's called us to be holy people. He's called us to be interceders. He's called us to care when no one else cares. He's called us to do a lot of things. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard to do the right thing. Do you know what I mean? Especially when the other people are not playing by the rules. People are nasty. Mark it down. I'd like them to be nice, wouldn't you? 
Let me tell you, I don't really expect unbelievers to be nice. Sometimes it surprises us. I'd like surprises, by the way. But here we are as Christians in in this burden to be Christ-like in a world that doesn't even know that Jesus loves them. And it's easy to say, well, can I just knock their block off just once? It's called laying on of hands. I'm just kidding. And we say, you know the Spirit of the Lord checks us and says, you can't do that. My old nature would like to say, well, let me tell you what's really going on here. And you know, that's not right either. Uh, we have what's called the Live Dead Initiative, where Christians are going to go into wor- or worlds or places of this world where no one's saved. And they're going to live Christ like they're going to be lived dead to the world and alive to God. Well, that's what God's really called us to do every day, isn't it? To live dead to this world and to live alive into the Spirit of God. And I'm still, that's my ministry as a Christian, not as a pastor. That's secondary. He's called us to do that. Another thing is, is that we've been called to do is to proclaim the Word of God. Oh, he wrote a thing down here. Ministry that costs nothing accomplishes nothing. Came across that in a book by Warren Wiersbe. I thought, ooh. Ministry that costs nothing accomplishes nothing. I, I, what it, I guess what, is, what you put in is what you're going to get out. I came to church. Not much happened. What would you bring? Wasn't they, weren't some supposed to bring a psalm and some a hymn and some, you know, and everybody's supposed to bring something? I didn't get much out of that. Well, you know what? It, it's the same way in everything in life. If you're waiting for that other person in your marriage to uh, bring you happiness, good luck. I hope they do, but it uh, doesn't always happen that way now, does it? And so, you know what? We are supposed to be walking with the Lord and bringing all that we can to the table wherever we go as a believer. You know, I, I really don't have dull days. Could you imagine that? There's some days, I, I'm very thankful I have two days the same, you know. But there's always exciting things. I had a hoot. I was down with the, uh, the kids at uh, Little League and telling jokes, of course, you know, and having a good time. Left my coffee cup there. It might be the God's will for me to not drink coffee. Of course, I have another one home, so that's good. <laughs> Replacement. But sometimes it'll cost us something to do the work of the Lord, you know. Ministry, what we've been called to do, uh, you know, is uh, to be proclaimers. You say, well, what would I have to proclaim? What did God do in your life? You know, uh, we, you know, that song we used to sing, He Saved Me, it was, you know, if it hadn't been for Jesus, where would I be? I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. What are you glad for? Well, I tell you what, I, I don't think it'd be wise to say to the person, yeah, I used to be a liar, cheat, and thief just like you, but now Jesus is in my life. Probably not the most effective witnessing tool there. But, I mean, I know some people that get a little aggressive on that. And, you know, you viper, you know, brutal viper, you know, and they, you know. If I, was, if I was an unbeliever, I would smack that guy into the next week, you know. Because, you know, it's, he was offensive. It, it was not the gospel that was offensive. It was that person that was offensive. But, you know, when people are struggling around and say, man, I, I'm not alone. God is helping me. I, I lean on the Lord. When I get into the over my head, I ask the Lord for help. When I need wisdom, he helps me. Would you like me to pray for you that he'll give you wisdom too? Man, what I've just done is I've walked alongside and said, hey, I'm walking the same road you are. Let's walk together. Okay, would you want to try to trust Jesus? You know, only one place in the whole Bible that says prove me, and, and that's in tithing. Yeah, pr- prove it. You know, try it. You know, we should give them. I know one of my friends gives a money back guarantee if you tithe and, and God is not good to you, or, you know, that something, you know, God doesn't do some miraculous thing in your life, we'll return your money. I'm thinking, well, he has more faith than I do. We'll just take your money, but uh, I'm just kidding. But, you know, there are some times when God wants us to prove him and to just to share, and really, some of the things that we've got to tell. We've got to re- reorient some people. I don't know why God has it in for me. 
Does God have it in for them? Who has it in for them? Satan, the devil, who is roaring, who is trying to chew them up, spit them up, lies, kills, destroys. He comes after them. But I have come that they might have life. Some people believe that, that it's the Lord that's after them. And that's almost blasphemy when they give credit to the, to, you know, they're, they're giving really glory to the devil for the things that God really would like to do. They're, they're blaming God for what the devil has done. That's sort of like misplaced blame. Some places that's blasphemy, to give glory to the devil of the things that God has done. So we have to help some people to realize that it's the devil who is trying to tear them apart. We've got to just tell them civil stuff. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure this out, you know. The other thing is that we've got to let them know that the devil is your enemy. I've had people say to me, when I die, I want to go to hell to be with all my friends. I said, you really don't understand what you're saying here. I know that that's, you know, I know some of the songs even say some, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints. Only the good die young. I don't think so. That's, it's a lie. I don't care if it made a lot of money, it's still a lie. And people want to believe a lie because in here it says Satan has blinded their eyes. They want to, and so you and I are truth tellers and we've got to tell them that the Satan wants your soul and he's the enemy. He's not your friend. I'm, this is just a, an editorial. Have you noticed that entertainment in general has gotten very dark? we got a lot of witch kind of stuff. Now we're werewolves and vampires and, you know, and, and just everything. And I'm thinking, first, I don't believe in any of that nonsense. Why are you wasting my time? Oh, it's, it's, it's really creative. No, it's stupid. Let's just call it what it is. You know? How many remember Dark Shadows when you were when a kid, you know? Man, I'll tell you what. After a while, I said, I just can't watch this. It's not feeding my soul. I'm not busting on all the people, but see, our whole society is gripped by that stuff. And now we have special effects that can do that. And really what we're doing is when our, our families are participating, and, you know, I just am saying, that, you know, I'm sure that's a good thing. I'm not going to yell at them. I'm not going to castigate them and call them wicked or anything like that. I'm just saying, do you think that's real? You know, have you ever seen a vampire? Besides someone who wants to lend you money, you know, 28% interest. Okay, behave. Well, they'll suck the blood out of you, won't they? <laughs> All right. We've got to tell them the truth about Jesus. He says in here, we gotta, we're not going to preach ourselves, but we're going to preach who Jesus is. Tell, what would you tell them if you're going to tell someone about Jesus? What, do you, what would you tell them? I'll give you, a, this is an interactive moment. What would you tell them if someone... If you had to describe Jesus to someone who is let's, uh, sitting beside you and you're given blood and they're going in for a cancer treatment, what would you tell them? Pardon? That Jesus really loves them? Okay. Okay, he cares for them. What else? What would you tell them? Jesus gives me peace. There's hope the yeah, there's hope beyond the cancer. You know, I have a God who can heal cancer. It's not up to me. I mean, would you let me pray with you? I don't, in my life have I ever had one person that ever didn't let me pray for them, including a Jewish professor. I prayed with him. And I said in Jesus' name, too. I was sort of proud of myself. You know, and God healed him, which is even wild. He came to me two weeks later and said, your God healed me. Like, I said, he loves you. You know, see, we get into these places. We, you say, well, why am I going through this? Well, so we can rub shoulders with people who are going through the same thing, right? He starts out in 2 Corinthians, blessed be the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our affliction so that we in turn can comfort others who are in a similar situation. Boy, isn't that great? So well, there's a reason that we're going to be there. You know what? That helps me to go through some bad stuff. I'm looking around 
I'm looking up and I'm looking around to see who can I talk to. We go over to rehab. I've been telling stories and carrying on. We, we ran into this one lady that is atheist. And we got, you know, and, and I talked to some guys and, you know, one of the firemen was a first responder to the bus accident and I talked to him a little bit with some skills that I've learned and, and uh, we go in and the therapist now says, hey, Reverend, what's new? I'm not even there for therapy. I, maybe I'm there for the other kind of therapy. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? We're there and here. And I thought, you know, and I compliment them because I say, look, all these people, I said, you are the inflictor of pain and it's so friendly in here. You know, <laughs> you know, people are like doing their little spider up the wall with their arm and trying to get things, you know, and they're winged and, you know, they've got all this apparatus on them. And, and, and so I just try to come in and encourage people and we just don't know who we're going to touch. Might as well enjoy it. it you, you know, there, might as well, if you're going to a place where it's tough, you might as well give the devil a black eye. It's not because I'm just naturally an up kind of person. It's just I want people to know the Lord. I want, I'm, I'm building for bridges for them, him to get across to speak to their heart. Someone, someone says, you know, preachers make me nervous. I said, me too. Oh, well, some make me nervous, you know. We have a powerful ministry. Do you think about that? Look what, you know, Paul says, not, not I'm, a, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but this ministry that, you know, it's not by might, it's not by power, uh, by a human power, but by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. That's Old Testament Zechariah, but boy, it's even more true today because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, if you're waiting to get strong enough, mark it down, you'll never be strong enough. What you need to do is have a little faith and try. God chooses to take things that are weak. Some of you don't know all of my history. You don't know that I had two years of speech therapy because I stuttered as a little boy. You don't know, you didn't know that until I just told you. See, God took a kid who didn't have any of the bells and whistles, and he's been blessing me with his presence. You think I sit home and I memorize all the scripture, but the Holy Spirit brings those things to my mind, and I'm willing to get up and do it. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of effort on our part, and, and God delights. Now, it's not, I'm not saying we shouldn't study it. I'm not saying we shouldn't prepare ourselves. I obviously come prepared. But, you know, God does things that I never thought about. On the way out this morning, we had a visitor who sat over on this side, and she came in, she goes, you talk to me, that whole service. She goes, it's like God just talking to me. I said, she says, thank you. I'm guessing she's going to be back next week. I didn't even know her name. But I, I was, I, I, and I went home, and I was so... I was just so overwhelmed. Because God uses me. And this is not false humility. I'm just trying to tell you the plain vanilla truth. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles. You just have the Spirit of God to help you. And it might be sitting at the little league game when someone says, oh, we're going through a hard place. Would you mind if I, could I, could I pray with you? And it doesn't have to be a barn burner. Just say, Lord Jesus, come and help him in the time of need. And he does things that we can't even imagine. We... A, a, a few months ago, uh, we got a phone call. Uh, someone passed away. They were at the house. Would you come? I hadn't seen these people in years. We met them through uh, PTO. But God brought me to their memory. Could you come? All right, I'll come. I'll give it a shot. I'd like to tell you, I, I, you know, sometimes I grumble. I know you'd never believe that. Dear Lord, can't Saturday, man, can't I just, can't you cut me a break? Lord says, shut up. You know, you know I mean, he doesn't talk like that to you, but he does to me because I grumble. I remember being on vacation one time and I, someone says, hey, could you stop and talk to this guy? And I led him to the Lord. Sort of felt like Jonah. I didn't really want to be there, but I just sort of out of niceness. I went, and my son Peter says, Dad, I knew you were gone. I knew you were gone. Yeah, that was cool. 
just takes a little bit of hope and a little bit of faith and just God delights in wowing us. If you just take a little step of faith, it's, he uses the weak to confound the wise. And you know what? He gives us power even when we suffer. That's what it says in here. We preach not ourselves, and then he commands the light, and then he says, but we have this treasure in earth and vessels, and they didn't get exempted. They got beat up, whooped, and all that. One time Paul gives them a longer list of all the times he got beat and thrown out of, you know, all the things left for dead and everything like that. Psalm 37, verse the 20s, 24, says, Though he fall, he shall not be uttered or cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. God gives us, and he gives you supernatural strength. He just, plain vanilla kind of people God uses, and that's good. We have a powerful, we are, we are hand, I talked to a pastor the other day, and, and he says, I've done, I haven't done anything wrong. I said, good. I said, do you think you go through hard things just because you did everything right? I said, somebody can do everything right, and nothing goes right. I said, how are you going to feel? He said, well, I'm going to preach on something. I said, good boy. Stick with it. I said, this is not the time to bowl, uh, buckle and fold. This is the time to go forward in the power and the strength that only God can give you. We have the gospel. It has power to save. Do you think the devil wants that to happen? To people that are messed up, that are bound by sin? No, that's why there's resistance. But the word is, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. I would imagine that uh, sometimes when the discipleship ministry, it's hard for them juggling schedules. Sometimes they go and their stomach is rumbling as they sing or do whatever, and they have put that ministry at a, a premium. And that's why, oh, 15 or 20 people a year get saved because people put it on their schedule. I mean, today Kathy Nelson was here, even though she lives in, in Duncan, and she was here because she was going to go preach today because Gerald had to be at a 50th anniversary party. So Kathy was sitting here, and now she's sort of taken some of uh, Mac's mantle, and she has a purpose. And she was preaching this afternoon, and Gerald wasn't even going to be there. Pretty cool. That's neat. I remember the first time she preached, she was scared to death. And yet God gave her grace, and he'll give us grace too. And you know the best part? First John says, everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. This is a victory. That we've overcome the world, even our faith, he says in First John chapter 5. We have victory. Last night, Gerald said, we were at one of the nursing homes, and this one lady had her head down the whole time, he says, I was sure she was sleeping, but when the altar call came, her head perked up, she was ready to get saved, just like that. Sometimes things don't always appear the way we see it in this world. In fact, can I say it, the Apostle Paul saw things, he says, you know what, this is not all there is to life. He, he valued the supernatural and the spiritual more than the temporary of this world. We are in a spiritual battle, and every one of us is a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes, if it was up to our strength, we couldn't do it. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's the operative words, through him, Paul writes. If it was up to you and I, we would fall flat in our face. That's what he's saying. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. We have the power of God so that others will see the power of God that works through us. And at the end of this passage, he says, hey, our light affliction, our, our whole life is just a drop in the bucket compared to what God has in store. Our light affliction, it works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What we do now does count. How we live does count. What we do, you know, some people say, you can't take it with it. Oh, yes, you can. Living for the Lord, giving that cup of water, he's paying attention. Whatever you and I can do for the kingdom's sake as we can move someone closer to the Lord, it will always be at the cost of the righteous that the unrighteous come to the Lord. 
It will always be someone like you and me who's praying for someone who doesn't care. I liken it to, it, it, was, it was the Lord and his power, that work, God's power that worked through him that raised Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus could have no faith, but God did what Lazarus couldn't do. And here's the kicker. And greater things will you do. It just says to me that God wants to work through me and you. I've not raised anybody from the dead, but I prayed for people to get out of wheelchairs already. It's up to the Lord. Someone says, well, that was a terrible day. I said, oh, no. Did you feel the faith in the room that day? Did you feel when, when people, I remember Evelyn sitting right over here, said, you know what, I can bend my knee. I remember my wife saying, I'd like to run around the room. I feel like I can do that. Of course, she couldn't run. But she just felt so invigorated, the power, the anticipation of what God would do in that moment. Whenever you once in a while we get to a threshold like that where our faith rises to what God wants to do and miracles happen. You know what? Does God want to use you? Oh, yeah. Is God through with you? Oh, no. And so God is at work in us just like he was in Paul and he calls all of us and he gives us victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? I was thinking of my friend Patty when I wrote some of that. She had a hard life. She worked hard. She was always trying to accomplish things and, and she loved the Lord. She would give uh, time to the church and she would work with children and, and it's all the things because that was her passion to serve the Lord. See, we're sure of the ultimate victory. And we want God to be glorified. We want the trials that we're going through. You know, it'd be ter terrible to go through the trial and get no benefit. We want it to work for the glory of God. And the best part we believe in things that the world can't even imagine. We believe in the invisible. It's more real than the real. The things you can see. And they call us stupid. I call us spiritual. And you who are spiritual, you know, we have this ministry. Ministry is only, well, ministry is something in one sense, a minister is who you are, and ministry is something you do. Ministers do ministry. So God has called each one of you to ministry because he's called you his priest. You are a royal priesthood. And he calls us. And what the Apostle Paul says, listen, we're not... We, by the way, 2 Corinthians, he's writing to people who are discouraged. He's, work, he's writing to people who the taxes are going up. He's writing to people who were mis, uh, you know, abused and hurt. He's writing to people just like us. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. So the excellency, the power of God. When I say crack pots, you know why? That's so the sun can shine through. Don't you like the, the thing over on the, the Church of the Brethren thing, the, the weather report? God rains and the sun shines. I'm thinking, I like, I like that. That was, a, that, was that was encouragement to me. I got to tell Randy who puts those on there, I like that. You know what? Our God is able. Would you bow your heads with me for a moment? Lord Jesus, when we think of all the things we can't do, we're very mindful of all the things that you want to do. Forgive us when we see our limitations and we ask now that you help us to focus on the potentials and the possibilities that through your presence and your power and your divine enablement, that we can do more than we ever thought we could do. Lord, I pray for those who have been discouraged who said, eh, maybe my time is up. Lord, you'll tell us when our time is up when you usher us in and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant like Patty. Lord, until that time, until that uh, time, we want to be faithful. We want to finish well. Lord, we want to have the joy of the Lord that is our strength. We need that strength every day. So Lord, I pray your encouragement upon many who have been discouraged. I pray even tonight that as uh, we're at the beginning of the summer and people are going to be scattered all over on vacation, that, Lord, you're going to send us sort of like those dandelions that blow in the wind. And we're going to stand in line at cafeteria or at amusement park with people who need prayer and need to see the love of Jesus. 
the very fact that you could use us wows us now. Lord, we, we say yes to you. Lord, we say, I love you, Lord, like we did this morning. We sing songs like, take my life and let it be. And tonight you reminded us in all the songs that we are never alone, that you will go with us, that you will make the way uh, straight in front of us. And like the psalmist says, that you are our, our rearward, you are our forward, you are behind us, you are before us, you are with us, you surround us. And your angels are camp around about those that fear the Lord. Lord, I pray your encouragement upon every person here. And then I ask that you'd help us to do your will. Help us to, as the old saying said, to bloom where we're planted and be glorifying you. And of all of God's people said, amen.